so there's some uh, really good news. The, uh, after, like I said, four months, four months, because the, the Tokyo Disney Resort closed, I think it was March 1st. It may have been like February 29th or February 30th. Basically, it closed at the beginning of March. And it's not going to reopen until July 1st, which is next month. So that means for the entire month of March, entire month of April, entire month of May, and the entire month of June, it was closed for months, which is, uh, is crazy. That's like so crazy. Um, yeah. July 1st, is July 1st Canada Day? What? Really? That's so crazy. I did not know that. Um, I did so is it always on July 1st, Canada Day? Because that's so funny, because um, July 4th is like, <laughs> you can pretty much call it America Day, <laughs> Independence Day. But uh, I didn't realize that Canada and... Independence Day were so close to each other. That's really weird. Um, do you guys do fireworks on Canada Day? What do you do on Canada Day? What's the, what's the custom? Are there customs? Do you guys like? Is it, do you guys like eat something special? Do you go? Do you do anything? Do you barbecue? Like what's what's the custom for Canada Day? I'm curious. <laughs> While you're answering that, I'm gonna put eye drops in my eyes because they're really dry. So, sorry. Uh, sorry about that. My, eye, my eyes are like super dry. Windsor, Detroit. Do a combination firework display. Very cool. Very cool, guys. Very good to know. I, l I know so much more about Canada now. It's crazy. Um, I also learned that Canada has like major postal delays <laughs> as well. <laughs> I learned that as well. Um, so I'm not too happy with Canada right now. I'm like, Canada, <laughs> get your stuff together. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and my friend is messaging to me. I'm like, go away. So, so yeah, so like I said, um, yesterday, the Tokyo Disney Resort um, updated their website to let everyone know the news that we all have been waiting for, which is the park reopening plans. Because like I've been telling you over and over again for like the past couple weeks, um, the Tokyo Disney Resort technically are able to reopen whenever they please. Um, and this started at the end of March. Right? No, 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 sorry. The end of uh, May. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> the end of May. Because at the end of May, the state of emergency in Tokyo was lifted, meaning that all businesses um, starting in June could reopen whenever they were ready. And so it seems like um, the Tokyo Disney Resort spent pretty much all of June trying to hash out all the details which i will soon be going over because now that i've kind of seen everything that's going down uh it kind of makes sense because there's a lot of changes a lot a lot of changes uh so many that i'm like i don't even know it's like a completely different experience um once it reopens so different uh yeah anyways so let's go over let's go over some of the uh the, the major changes i mean the first and most obvious uh piece of news is the reopening date which like i said earlier is canada day <laughs> i'm sure japan planned that they're like you know what we're gonna reopen on canada day uh so july 1st but there should be an asterisk <laughs> next to that July 1st date because there's a whole bunch of caveats um, that go with that. 
And the major caveat, really for me, not so much uh, most normal people. And when I say me, it's because I'm a annual pass holder, uh, passport holder, we call it passports here, for both parks, Disneyland and Disney Sea. And for people who do not have an annual passport, uh, I think starting tomorrow, the 25th, today is the 24th, right? Today is the 24th? Yes. So starting tomorrow, I believe, um, let me check. Most people, like, whoever wants to can start buying, yes, yeah, starting tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, you People in Japan can now buy tickets to the Tokyo Disney Resort when it reopens on July 1st. However, me, being an annual passport holder, uh, I don't know <laughs> when I can actually go back to the parks for two reasons. Um, one is uh, I can't physically go to the park on July 1st um, at this particular moment. Uh, why is that? Because uh, annual passport annual passport holders will not be able to just visit the parks whenever they please like we could before the pandemic. Instead, they're going to create a lottery system where we enter a lottery and then if we win the lottery, then we can choose the park we want to go to. I believe, and the reason why I say believe is that um, this information is not ready right to is not actually out right now uh to prove this i will show you what is what they actually uh posted yesterday the news is incredibly vague um which is sort of annoying so uh this is kind of hard to see maybe i should um hold on what is this what is this thing i don't even know what this thing is sorry i'm gonna increase the hold on Let's see at this there we go so maybe you guys can see this a little bit better so annual passports can you see that okay you can probably read that i'm hoping you can read that <laughs> if you can't read that then i apologize and let me move this away from my face <laughs> okay <laughs> i guess we can we can it can go over the schedule so it says Measures are being taken for guests holding annual passports, which expire on February 29, 2020, to be eligible for the following. Extension period or refund. So basically, I guess what they're saying is like, um, your, your passport will either get uh, extended, which I think most people are going to be like, yeah, just go ahead and extend my passport. Or you can get a refund, which... I think very few people will do because the the hardest of the hardcore are the people who get passports. And I don't think a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, just give me a refund. They're going to be like, no, I'm going to go back. So um, it's cool that they're offering a refund, but I, I presume that not a lot of people will be taking them up on that. I could be wrong, but um, yeah. And then they say that... Um, Online purchase of merchandise and admission lottery. So park merch will be offered uh, in the Tokyo Disney Resort app so they can be purchased without visiting the park, which is amazing, which I'll get to in a second. In addition, a lottery will be set up to allocate a portion of park emissions to guests holding annual passports during the period when annual passports cannot be used for park admission. Details will be announced uh, on the official website soon. So... Like I said, it's incredibly vague. Like, I don't even know exactly how this is going to work. Like I said, um, if I enter this lottery and say I get selected, can I visit both parks? Can I choose the day which I go? Um, how many times? Can, can I only go once? Like, there's so many unanswered questions about how, how this is going to work that it's a little... Um, uh, it's a little scary in a way because I'm like, how, uh, 
wow, what's going on here? But the good thing for uh, my business and um, and for you guys who want park merch is they are saying that I will be able to purchase park merch in the app um, without even visiting the parks. And that sounds pretty amazing, albeit I'm already doing that right now. Um, if you guys have been following these streams, you know that for the past few weeks, I've been able to buy park merch um, in the app. However, there's a lot of uh, caveats and limitations. The biggest one being I can only buy three of one item. So for instance, if I buy a burger tote, I can only buy three of them at a time every day. And like I've been telling you guys in these streams, <laughs> um, these items in the park app sell out insanely fast. I'm talking it. So every day that the app is open uh, at 9 a.m. is when you can start buying the merch. And every day by 9, 10, and I'm not joking when I say this, usually by 9, 10, everything in the app is sold out. So it's a little crazy. Luckily, I've been having a lot of really good luck lately. So I have been able to buy um, a good amount of stuff, which is great because I have a lot of outstanding orders that I'm trying to fulfill. And so it seems like I'll be able to continue to do this, uh, which is great. And here are the things that I'm kind of questioning uh, and I don't really know the answers to at the moment. So, yes, it says I will be able to buy park merch uh, without even visiting the parks, which is cool. And as an annual passporter, passport holder, that is a nice perk. But here are my kind of questions slash concerns. So at the moment, um, I can buy merch in the app. However, they don't have any new items. So anything that uh, was supposed to be released uh, the, in the past four months is currently not in the app. So essentially, it's really just a bunch of evergreen merch and or merch that's been released in the past, which is great for me for fulfilling outstanding orders, but it's not particularly good for anything that's up and coming that people want. So um, I'm presuming, and I use the word presuming because you can never know with the Tokyo Disney Resort. I'm presuming that when the parks reopen on July 1st and we can start buying merch in the app, anything new that is available at the parks will then be put into the app. Uh, that makes a lot of sense, <laughs> like I said. However, I'm not really sure. Um, so that's like one question concern. Another question concern is there are items that you can buy in the parks that are not always in the app. Um, the most notable item is the popcorn buckets. So as of right now, the only way you can get popcorn buckets is at the parks, at, at the popcorn uh, vendors, right? And so um, if I can't physically go to the parks, I may not be able to pick up any popcorn buckets because I can't go to the popcorn vendors. So here's the weird part. <laughs> this is where things get really tricky. So last year, there was a time when they did sell popcorn buckets in the app but it was only for like a hot minute, which is so weird. So they had them available and then they took them off the app. Why? I have absolutely no idea. So it's possible that they may re-add them to the app and I will be able to get them. But like I said, I have no idea. I have no idea because they haven't told us. So that's another thing. And the third uh, and final concern is quite a big one and is that um, I do not know if I will be able to buy Duffy merch. Yes. <laughs> Why is that? Well, right now, even though I can buy 
uh, park items in the Tokyo Disney Resort app. They, however, are not allowing anybody to buy Duffy merch. And that is because the only place you can buy Duffy merch is at Tokyo Disney Sea. And normally, um, you can buy Duffy merch in the app, but only if you visit Tokyo Disney Sea. So here become here's the interesting question. If they're letting annual passport holders buy merch in the app without visiting the parks, technically we should be able to buy Duffy merch, particularly if we have a passport for Disney Sea. In my case, like I said earlier, I, my passport is for both parks. So technically, I should be able to, right? Because they say that I don't have to visit the parks and um, I have a Disney Sea passport. So if the parks were open, technically I would be able to go into the park and get it. So even though I'm saying this and it makes sense, it does not mean that it is going to um, be true. And I just want to caveat by saying that, um, again, I have no idea. We won't, I don't, I will not know until they either update the website or on July 1st when I check. So I want to, I want to say I'll be able to buy Duffy merch because I think a lot of pass holders, passport holders who, um, who can't get into the lottery and, and don't win I think they're going to be really, really, really bummed and upset if they can't buy Duffy merch. Because I know that there's a lot of passport holders who just have a Disney C uh, passport because all they care about is like Duffy stuff. So, but at the same time, I can see them. I can also, on the flip side, see them not selling the Duffy merch in the app. So, a lot of, lot of questions that. As of right now, I don't know the answer to. It's kind of confusing, like I said. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what they end up doing. I hope that, here's my hopes. I hope that they get rid of the um, item limit. The three, three of one item limit. They will probably keep that with Duffy because that one or three of one item limit is always um, a rule for Duffy merch. So even if you go to Disney Sea, they only allow you to buy three of one Duffy item. The the workaround for that is that if you're at the actual park, you can just buy three of one item, go to a cashier, and then go get three more, and then go to a different cashier. So. I mean, there, there's a workaround for that. Um, and in the app, I'm presuming that I can just do one order and then do another order. So, I mean, that's not that big of a deal. But uh, if they keep this, this limitation on all merch, that is a little annoying for me because um, there may be a popular item that um, I sell a lot of and maybe a lot of people want them. And if I... And like limited by how much I can buy, that's a bummer. So I don't know if that limit is going to stay because once the parks reopen, they're not going to allow everybody to buy park merch in the app. Because right now, everybody can. It doesn't matter where you are in Japan. It doesn't matter if you have an annual passport or not. You can buy merch in the app if you are able to do it at 9 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> so once they limit the purchases of park items in the app to only passport holders, that may they may allow us, us passport people, passport <laughs> folks, <laughs> peeps, to uh, buy more. But I don't know what to do about it. I don't know. The other thing is that I hope that they they do include um, not only new items, so any event merch, any new things, they include them in the app. I also hope that they include um, items that are not currently in the app, but are available in the parks. The, the biggest ones being popcorn buckets. So 
that's my other hope. My last hope is again Duffy Merge. So we shall see, guys. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. We'll we'll see what happens. Um, let's 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 hope for the best. Um, but it's something though. And I, I will say though that as much as I want to go back to the parks because um, I miss going there and I want to take pictures and I want to see all the changes and I just it's just a it's it's just something I've been doing for like three years so I like it's part of my life here and I I, I miss I miss the joy that it brings um I'm also liking the fact that um in this kind of weird transitional period I can do my job without even having to go to the parks because that's pretty convenient for me if I can just get on the app and like get a bunch of merch and have it delivered to my office and not have to like worry about the, the crowds and like, you know, potentially uh, being amongst people who may have the virus and like just all of the kind of rigmarole around the physical process of like carrying everything and all that. It's pretty convenient. So um, granted, all the things I said earlier um, are addressed. So I'm a little bit excited about that. I'm like, I'm like, man, I can just sit in my office and buy a bunch of stuff and everything will be okay. So, and who knows how long this, um, this, this kind of like weird, like <laughs> COVID period. I don't even know what we're, we're going to have to come up with a term for it. Like this weird transitional period where things are like completely different um i don't know how long it's gonna last i mean it could it could last a couple months it could last six months a year i mean i don't know like but it's a little concerning because like i don't know how this lottery system is gonna work how easy is it gonna be for me to get in because i i know for a fact that um there are a lot of passport holders and I guarantee like 99.9999999999% of them, if they had the option, would go back on July 1st, like easily. Like, so it's going to be very competitive to win that lottery. Um, and like I was talking with my friend, Manaye, who, who I did my podcast with, and I'm like, I'm like, man, like, I want to go back to the park with her. But like I said, if I win the lottery, I don't know if I get to choose my day or not. Because, like, what if she wins and I win, but we can't choose our days? And so then it's kind of like, what, am I just going to go there by myself? I mean, I do that all the time. But, um, yeah, so it's it's crazy, guys. It's crazy. This is – and as you can see um, – a lot of these changes are completely different than the U.S. parks for good reason because um, Tokyo Disney Resort is not owned technically by Disney, so they have they can come up with their own rules and things. So yeah, so that's like the the main news and info which I just went over, but there are a whole slew of other crazy changes that we should talk about um including um some not so good news because um because of the fact that the, the parks have been closed for so long there are some things that um aren't going to happen anymore like easter <laughs> and we've already known this we've, we've already known this Easter was a casualty of the COVID crisis. Uh, no Tip Top Easter, my favorite show, which is a huge bummer. But the the bigger thing was, and I, I when I saw this yesterday, I was like, say what? So it's actually not on this, this doc here. Um, it's actually on the website, but um, we will, I'll go over that in a second, but yeah. So not only is is Easter canceled, but they're also canceling the Duffy Summer event, which when I read that, I was like, are you kidding me? What? That's crazy. So 
there's always a Duffy summer event um, every year, and it's it's canceled this year. It's done. It's donezo, and that that shocked me. That really shocked me because the events that they were canceling, like Easter, it was pretty expected because they were supposed to start a long time ago, and technically they're already over right now. But the Duffy summer event was supposed to start, um, I think it it technically would have been started now, but it's a summer event. So, I mean, there's no reason why it couldn't have started on July 1st. But it may just be that um, because of the limitations of the amount of people they can put into the park and the kind of... Um, frenzy that new Duffy stuff creates maybe they're just trying to play it safe and they were just like you know what let's not deal with this Duffy event let's just cancel it let's kind of start the parks off in the most simplest of ways and kind of build ourselves back up to the normal kind of schedule and and things so that could be a reason, but yeah, no Duffy event, which is, like I said, it's pretty pretty nutso. Um, and let me see what the other one is. I can't remember what the... Um, what is it? Uh... But da, 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 da. where is the information? Oh. Oh. Is Bon Voyage gonna be open? I don't know. Let's check. Let's check. Um. What? What? So you have to like get a reservation? Oh my god. What? So Bon Voyage. Um, what? Bon Voyage is like the big the big gift shop that's like right before you enter Tokyo Disneyland, but you have to you have to like enter a, a reservation system to to uh, to even shop there. Oh my god! Wow. Okay, I gotta do that later. Oh man. Yeah, there's so many changes, guys. That's crazy. What? Oh wow, this so starting tomorrow. Oh, temporary holidays, okay. So, what? Oh my god. So I got to reserve, guys. I got to reserve. Oh my god, this is crazy. <laughs> okay. I I got to do this after um after I end my stream. I didn't realize that. Oh my god, so I got to reserve um my trip to Bon Voyage. This is this is like it, this pandemic has been just it's like completely changed everything because like i'm just thinking about um you know i was like scrolling through my photos uh yesterday um <laughs> like trying to find a photo to post for today and i was just thinking like man man life used to be so simple i i take it's like we take for granted how like how simple things were like I look back and like even though at the time I'm like I maybe wasn't like super happy with how things are going it's like right now I'm like I would so love to go back to those times because you know but like going to Bon Voyage like I can go whenever I wanted to I could just it doesn't matter I just like go there whenever I want you know it's like <laughs> and now it's like 
I have to like reserve a time and like it's it's a uh, it's like a ordeal now. It's like an it's a privilege to be able to <laughs> visit a store that under normal cir circumstances is like always open and there's like no issues at all. So, um, man, life has changed, man. Life has changed. And it's like, I don't know how long, like I said, I don't know how long this is going to last. But let's go, speaking of changes, let's go over some more changes that are not <laughs> really that, they're kind of crazy. These are some crazy changes, guys. Oh, whoops, that's me. <laughs> that's my, like, stream manager. I keep on forgetting that I have my, um, um website open so yeah so one of the biggest changes are if you remember from my stream uh last week or maybe the week before i was talking about the rumors of when the parks reopened a lot of things would be closed well it turns out those rumors were mostly true um uh, not all true and the rumors were that when the parks reopened all shows, character greetings, and attractions will be closed. And now that we have the info about the reopening plans, I can tell you that um, all shows pretty much are canceled. All character greetings are pretty much canceled. And even though there are some attractions that are running, there are also some that are canceled. So attractions are still going. So here are some of the kind of attraction character greeting kind of stuff so one of the things is that they're completely getting rid of fast passes for the time being and i think that makes sense because they're going to be limiting the amount of people that even go into the park and like i said some of the attractions are even closed so and i imagine they haven't really gone into specifics about how they're going to do social distancing on some of the attractions. They say here, as a general rule, social distancing will be maintained between groups on rides and attractions. Until we actually like go to the park, it's really difficult to say how they're going to enforce that. And so I can see them not doing fast passes just because it's like such a weird system now and it's kind of hard to like enforce the fast pass when we have all of these new rules to abide by um, and single riders are also suspended which isn't that big of a deal because there's really only two rides um, at tokyo disneyland that take single riders that being splash mountain and big thunder mountain and then there's two at um disney c indiana jones and raging spirits so that's not a big deal um the whole thing about uh like i said social distancing on the rides it's interesting because i wonder what they're gonna do for some of the rides for instance a ride like tower of terror they can easily do social dis distancing because they can just have every other seat be um, blocked off, right? So you're, there's always going to be an empty seat between you. That's completely easy. I can totally see them doing that. However, there's some rides, for instance, like Space Mountain um, most, uh, or like Haunted Mansion, where you're in like a small car, like a two-seat car, and there's really no way to like social distance that ride. I guess the caveat being like, say you go on Haunted Mansion, right? And you go with like your family, your friend, your significant other, your dog, your cat. We can't take pets in. <laughs> um, your, your invisible friend. Um, I can see that being okay. Like if you know the person, then maybe it's not like, it's okay if you sit next to them, maybe, maybe. But uh, if you're if you're like a rando like me, like a, a single person, then I, I'm presuming they'll, they'll just give you your own car, which they 
almost always do with me anyways, so it wouldn't be that much of a problem. But I am curious, though, what are they going to do with these rides? Like I said earlier, like Space Mountain, Haunted Mansion. Um, I'm trying to think of some other rides that are like two-seaters. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But, but luckily, there are a lot of rides where they can easily social distance, like Pirates of the Caribbean, Small World. Uh, those are super easy because you can just, I mean, they're big boats and things. But a lot of the Fantasyland rides, like Pinocchio, Snow White, um, even like something like Dumbo, like, again, like, it's really, I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe it's like, if I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, so character greetings, they're pretty much canceling all uh, permanent can uh, permanent character greetings. And what that means is like greetings where you wait in line to meet a character at a specific spot with a specific theme. And so if you look here on uh, Tokyo Disneyland, um, some of these, some of the greetings are like the wood truck, the woodchuck greeting trail, uh, Mickey's house. Um, what are some other ones? Those are like the two, the two big ones. Because at the woodchuck greeting trail, you can meet Donald or Daisy, and they're wearing like a um, kind of Cub Scout kind of outfit. At Mickey's house, uh, you can meet four different Mickeys: uh, Steamboat Willie. Sorcerer and Mickey, um, the band, the band Mickey, and the last one is like Tuxedo Mickey, who I believe is from like a magic show cartoon. But anyways, yeah, so those are, those are Dunzo. Um, and the same goes for uh, Disney Sea, which is like the village greeting place, the Salutos Amigos greeting doc, the Mickey and Friends greeting trail, um, etc. So you can't you can't meet any characters there. It does say that they're doing. Um, where does it say? So it says character greetings, which involve contact with guests, will be suspended, but characters will greet guests by incorporate incorporating physical distancing. That is a thing that is again um, TBD as far as how they do it. Um, so I'm presuming what they mean by that is um, in various uh, locations at the park, a lot of random characters will come out and just greet you. Like, for instance, at the entrance of Tokyo Disneyland or in, in Adventureland, Toontown, Tomorrowland, etc. Um, and they're just random characters. They change all the time. And so it seems like those characters will still be around to greet guests. But the question is, how are they, how is that interaction going to be different? Because when those characters come out, um, in under normal circumstances, like you're hugging them, you're taking pictures with them. Um, it's very like, there's a lot of contact. There's a lot, there's not a lot of physical or social distancing, distancing going on. So I wonder if, if they'll just have the characters come out, but you can't, like, touch them. Um, or you can't... Or maybe if you take a picture, you have to be, like, far away from them. Like, if, if their handlers will be more um, uh, specific about what you can and can't do. Again, I have no idea. Um, it'll be interesting to see what, what they do with that. Because if they're canceling the permanent character greetings i don't see how like i don't see how that's any different than the random character greetings in some ways i think the random character greetings are worse than the permanent ones because the random ones you can just have like people just rushing up to them and like hugging them and and stuff like that like and even some characters like tweedledee and tweedledum they'll like purposely like mess with with people like they'll come and like they have like their tummies and they'll like smack people and thing, you know things like that. So I'm presuming they won't be doing that, obviously. But I'm just saying that like the random characters, 
uh, I don't know how they're going to enforce this quote unquote uh, social distancing. So, yeah. So some other things are closing. Um, things like the Penny Arcade, which is a a a section in in the Grant not Grant Emporium and the uh, what's what's the what's the main that that opening section called um, World Bazaar. In the World Bazaar, there's a quote, there's a Penny Arcade room which has a bunch of like old school um, kind of like animatronic like games uh, from like the really early like 19, 18, 20th, <laughs> 19, it's like the 20s maybe, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but there's a bunch of like little coin games and stuff so it looks like that's closed. The Swiss Family Treehouse is closed which makes a lot of sense. The, the Tom Sawyer Island Rafts is closed which again makes sense. Uh, Cinderella's Fairy Tale Hall, and then all of the things in Toontown. So basically everything in Toontown is closed. And all of those are like enclosed areas where you're like doing a lot of interactive stuff. So that makes sense. Um, at Disney Sea, the notable thing is really Ariel's Playground, which is in the Mermaid Lagoon. And I can see why they're, clo they're closing that because it is an enclosed area with a lot of like narrow spaces, but it is fairly big. So I don't know. And what is surprising to me is that the Mermaid Lagoon Theater is closed, uh, which is a awesome live performance with Ariel and her sisters. And I guess I can see that because they have an actual physical uh, Ariel that like flies around the room and she's like singing and stuff. So like maybe she can be like spitting on you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so... But yeah, that's kind of a bummer. And the only ride that is going to be closed. So let me let me double check this. Because there's because you could tent. I, I wouldn't consider like the Swiss Family Treehouse or the Tom Sawyer Island rafts. I wouldn't consider those rides. So it looks like the only attraction that will not be open during this weird period is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea at Disney Sea, And I can completely understand that. It is a, it's a dark ride where you get in a incredibly small cramped submarine. Uh, you're in like a crazy closed space. It's claustrophobic because it's all hell. And uh, it fits like three people, but um, I'm a small person. Uh, I'm only 5'5", five five, like I'm not that tall. But even when I go into this little submarine, I feel like I'm cramped and claustrophobic. So imagine what like, you know, a six foot uh, tall person and up must feel like. So that makes a lot of sense to me. So yeah, so that, those are those are the things that are closed. So as far as entertainment goes, um, basically like every show is closed. <laughs> like if you look at, <laughs> look at all of these things, it's like name a show at Disneyland or Disney, Disney Sea, it's closed. <laughs> so the fireworks display, done. Jamboree Mickey, done. Let's Party Gras, done. Mickey's Rainbow Luau, done. Horseshoe Roundup, done. It's like done, 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 done. It's like nothing is open. Even so, there's a guy who um, he's a foreigner, and in uh, the World Bazaar, he has a piano bike. So it's a it's a bike with a piano on it, and all he does is like play songs and sings and stuff. I don't know if he sings, but he plays songs for sure. Even even that is not going to be running, which is kind of weird because it, it's literally just a dude playing a piano on a bike, like. But it's not happening. It's not going to happen. So, yeah. And even the fun custodial. <laughs> fun custodial. So, um, at Disney Sea, there's, like, this um, this guy, this cast member who looks like a normal, like, janitor guy. But he actually has this, like, his trash can that, like, has all these, like, noises and, and stuff on it. And uh, he'll be, like, cleaning things. But... Uh, it, like he can make noises and I'm describing this incredibly poorly 
but it's a fun thing to watch, but even that's done. So, yeah, basically every show is done. There's not a show that is running. <laughs> when they were saying, like, when they came up with this list, they basically should have just been like, all shows are canceled. <laughs> yeah. So look at all of the caveats and rules for, for merch. Holy crap, there's so much stuff. It's crazy. So, so yeah, so basically, um, so store entries are restricted. You have to wear a mask. Um, they, have, they have, like, specified entry and exit points. You have to hand sanitize. Um, they're going to wipe down stuff. There's going to be plexiglass barriers. Uh, they're going to have face shields on. <laughs> They're, they want you to use um, credit cards and cashless payments, which is hilarious because it's Japan and Japan is like so behind the times when it comes to credit cards and stuff like that. So, but there's a bunch of shops that are closed. Um, so here's like a bunch of them at uh, Tokyo Disneyland. And a lot of these shops I completely understand because um, the way that the shops work at Tokyo Disneyland is that most of them, they pretty much all sell the same stuff, but they're just spread out through the park. So some of these like Pirate Treasure, Jungle Carnival, actually I say that, but Pirate Treasure does sell some pirate themed things that are only available there. But like General Store, um, uh, some of these other ones like Treasure Comet, Pleasure Land candies. Like, those all sell things that you can get at some of the main shops. So it's really not that big of a deal that they're closed. Um, some of the ones that, like, I wouldn't say it's a big deal, but, like, the Magic Shop, for instance, they only sell magic-related things. So if you, like, really wanted, like, magic items, then you'd be out of luck. But... I don't think a lot of people are going to be sad <laughs> that the magic shop is closed. Um, yeah, so there's just a lot of there's just a lot of small shops. Like I said, most of these are like small shops. Um, so yeah, they do have gift cards, but gift cards are kind of rare. Um, yeah. So restaurants, holy crap. There's like, look at all this restaurant stuff. Very similar to um, the, the shops. But looking, look at how many restaurants are closed. Holy crap. I was looking at this list and I'm telling you, like I said earlier, they should just tell you which ones are open versus which ones are closed because I'm looking at this list and in my head, I'm thinking like, what is actually gonna be open? <laughs> Cause looking at this, I'm like, I don't even know, man. This is like basically like every single restaurant. I can't even think of what is actually gonna be open. Maybe like popcorn vendors, even pop a lot popcorns that could be open. So I'm like, I don't know, man. I really, like, Village Pastry is closed. Man, like, everything is closed. I guess, um, I'm trying to think, like, what's actually going to be, Plasma Bills, is, or is that, is that what's called, Plasma Bills? So I guess, I guess that one's still open, Plasma, whatever that one's called. But yeah. So the, the Teddy Roosevelt Lounge is closed? What? That sucks. New York Deli is closed. Man, everything is closed. I can't, like, what is even actually open at Disney Sea? I don't even know, man. So it looks like, it looks like the, the, the sit-down restaurants are, are open at Disney Sea because I don't see... Um, I don't see, what's it called? Magellan's. I don't see Magellan's on here. And I don't see the Italian restaurant on here. 
So it looks like those are open, I just need to see. But it looks like most of the small food stands are closed. So yeah, like what? <laughs> Holy crap, there's so much stuff that's closed. Um, also guided tours are closed, <laughs> but no one really cares about that. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much um, that's like all of the the stuff, guys. It's like I said, it's it's a holy crap, it's a lot of stuff. Um, the going back to the parks is going to be a completely different experience than what it was like before because you know hardly anything is open. Um, and for a lot of Disney, Japanese Disney fans, the main reasons to go are not going to be there. For a lot of people, I would say, because I think for a lot of American fans, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a lot of American fans really enjoy the rides, right? Um, for instance, like, they love going to, like, the Star Wars ride and, like, all the, di the different attractions and whatnot. And here in Japan, I think most people care about shows and character greetings. And both of those are donezo. And I would say they also care a lot about food. And as we saw by that list earlier, there's hardly any food options open. So it really just comes down to some attractions which again like the japanese fans or they like but i don't think it, it's number one on their list and just walking around <laughs> taking pictures <laughs> um buying some merch at like one shop <laughs> so yeah man this is it's like the most stripped down experience you can possibly think of and yet they're still charging like 80 bucks to get in, which is just insane to me. Like as a consumer, if this wasn't my job, if I saw, if you show me this list and then told me, would you spend $80 to go to the park? I'd be like, hell no, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> so you're saying that I could spend $80 to eat at like one restaurant, <laughs> shop at like one gift shop, <laughs> and maybe ride some rides with some like uh, social distancing. I really don't know. So yeah. Fireworks are high on your list. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing though. It's like, um, that's the thing about like, no character greetings for like i said for japanese fans character greetings are that's like i mean shows and character readings are easily are number one and number two and for some people it may be tied um or it may be one or the other but i mean that's a huge part of the tokyo disney experience and i just i kind of feel for those people man to not have that however i still think that people are going to want to go because people here love Disney so much. And even if you can't get those things, they're still going to like take pictures and walk around and just be in the parks, I think, will be enough for them. But yeah, it's like... Um, it's like 80 bucks, I think. Which is crazy. I'm, I'm surprised that they didn't um, lower the price. Let's see. Yeah, it's about 80, 80 bucks for an adult for a one-day passport. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Is the entrance fee full price in Florida? I don't know. Maybe maybe somebody in Florida can answer that question. Does anyone know? Does anyone know in the chat? But, but yeah. So it is still full price. But... You guys, in Saturn's band, do you know if, like, is the amount of changes as drastic for Walt Disney World as they are for Tokyo? Because, I mean, I didn't read too much into the plan, the reopening plans for America, 
But it, it seems like our reopening plans are like so stupidly restricted that it almost begs the question like why even bother <laughs> you know it's like like at this point like like why even let people in it like yeah a hundred dollars wow but even like 80 i think it's so not worth it um for us right now especially for japanese disney fans like if they would have if they would have like uh reduced the price even even if it was by like 20 percent um just to like offset the the disappointment of not having some of these major um selling points i think would be a little bit of make it a little bit more worth it but yeah imagine like imagine if you're a kid and your parents are like, we're going to take you to Disneyland. You're like, I can't wait to go. And it's like, here are all the things you can't do. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you can't meet Mickey. <laughs> you can't go to the show. You can't eat your favorite restaurant. You can't do this. You can't do that. But you can walk around. <laughs> so, yeah. It's crazy. It is absolutely not so i just i can't i can't even begin to like understand how this is going to affect everybody once it opens that's why i kind of want to go right away because i want to i want to experience what this is like for people um and 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 see the reactions um i should ask my I should ask manai um i haven't really t I talked to her a, a bunch, but I I haven't asked her if she's kind of like gotten a sense of like how people are reacting to the news. Are they? Because I I think the thing about Japanese fans is that they are just they are happy with anything in a way, and I could be completely wrong on this, but um, I think most people would will willingly want to go back. But, yeah, like I said, if I wasn't a passport holder and I had to purchase an individual ticket, I just could not, I couldn't, I, there's no way I can justify spending $80 for the experience that they're going to give. So, and hopefully this doesn't last a long time because, I mean, if it's like three months of like next to nothing that's gonna be quite a bummer especially considering three months from now so let's just say we're in july right right now so july august uh july august september i mean that's halloween time like that's my favorite time of the year that's when you have like all the great merch all the great shows that's when you have people in costumes and if these restrictions are still around by August, September, I mean, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. It's going to be different. Everything is different right now. The world is different. And it makes me sad when people don't accept that or they, they still question it. They're like, this virus isn't real. I'm like, um hello like look around you <laughs> like <laughs> like this 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 single virus has completely like changed the entire world and that is the thing that um still to this day boggles my mind is that like one thing can like completely uproot everybody and oh it's insane and there's people out there who are like the virus is a hoax like like no you are a hoax <laughs> your critical thinking and logic is a hoax because if you can't see what's going on around you then i don't know what to tell you because yeah the world is completely messed up right now <laughs> And I am like, I just, 
I'm begging and pleading and praying that things get better soon because um, I think I can speak for all of us right now where we, this can be ending pretty soon. So we should end this. We should end, end this craziness. So yeah, guys, that's that. Um, I spent a lot of time talking about that. 